Hey everyone, so today I'm going to be going over how to properly use LinkedIn Sales Navigator. LinkedIn Sales Navigator is one of the most powerful data tools in your arsenal and I get so many questions about how do I build this list or how do I look for this trigger or is it possible to get this list and it's, it's almost always on Sales Navigator. Sales Navigator gives you great access to lists and uh, if you know how to pull out those lists from Sales Navigator, you could do some pretty pretty incredible things with it. Um, so this is going to be a basic overview of Sales Navigator. There's tons of products that you can use with it. Of course, I think that you should be using Clay along with Sales Navigator, but this is going to be an overview just of Sales Navigator. So let's get straight into it. So the first thing that uh, I like to go over when I'm going over Sales Navigator with new people is all of the different filters that are here and available to you are extremely powerful, um, specifically going for current job titles, company headcount, current company. Uh, a lot of times, past company can be really, really great. Uh, a lot of times people want to talk to new startup founders, and these new startup founders, uh, they want to make sure that they have some kind of track record. And so finding companies that you, or people that used to work at Facebook, and now they're working at a company with one to ten people and they are in the c-suite this is how you could build an awesome list of people who just recently started their own company uh well actually we can even do years in current company less than a year one to two years and now these are most likely startup founders uh that used to work at facebook that now are on their own starting their own companies so anyway that's just a quick search that we could just put together using linkedin so all of these ingrained filters are extremely powerful but one thing that people don't take enough advantage of in my opinion is the boolean searches so you can also search keywords here up at the top and it will give you some great extra advantages in your searches so i made this quick search uh this quick sheet about boolean searches boolean searches are essentially being able to tell a database uh I want a bunch of things and all of the requirements need to be true. I want a bunch of things and if only one of the requirements are true, that's totally fine. Or I want to exclude requirements from a list. So and is the one that when you pair and with two search items or more than two search items, you're telling the database, I want you to search for these two or more search items and all of them have to be true. Or you're searching for two or more search items and it doesn't matter if all of them are true at the same time it, you can look for anything and then not is of course you want to exclude something so i have some examples here so if we're looking for usually when we're looking for decision makers it doesn't matter we want the owner or the founder or the president or the co-founder and then we can even add or ceo right all of those would matter as the decision maker for the company same thing uh well then when we're talking about real estate agents right we want the real estate agent maybe we want a real estate broker but we don't want consultants so this is good for it doesn't matter that we would get a real estate agent and it doesn't matter that we get a broker we're going to say that they're the same things but it, we do not want to be talking to consultants and this is an example search that you can put in here and then if you want to search for doctors who are also pediatricians and both of those things have to be true we can use this uh in our boolean search so if you're going to be using this Boolean search, the basic way to do this would be to just come into Sales Nav and throw that in to your keywords, and you will find a ton of different decision makers that you'd also be able to narrow down with these searches over here. I don't see a whole lot of people using the keyword uh, search filters. This is how you get far more granular, and you can clean up a lot of the mess that, that LinkedIn might start causing for you here and there. One recent update to LinkedIn Sales Navigator, though, is if you go to current job title and you let's say we put chief technology officer oh that actually is not working let's try accountant hmm. all right we're gonna have to cut this out uh they don't do that anymore uh okay Now, the next part about Sales Navigator that is really amazing is your saved searches. 
And the reason I love saved searches is because they're dynamic. You can create the search and as people move in and out of matching that criteria, you either expand your list or your list gets overall refined uh, to match that. So if we just restart and let's say I want to build a quick list of people who are connected with me who live near me. So I want New Jersey. So these are my first degree connections who live in New Jersey. I've got 6,000. This makes sense. I live in New Jersey, so that's great. So we have 6,000 people near me. I can save this search and I'm going to call it first level connections near me. So now over time, if somebody moves from Miami to New Jersey, it will expand upon this search and I'll get even more people who are going to match these results. The uh, Another awesome trick that you can do with this is you can create a search of people that you have sold to in the past. So let's say we want to actually type up, we're going to look for my good friend, Amelia Taylor. The other thing that we can do is here she is we can click on this and we can hit save and we can add her to a list and so what we can do is we can add her to a new list and say sold to in the past and so now as I close deals I can continuously add people to this list now you might be saying now what are you going to do with this list after you've done that well that's a great question what I could do is I can use the workflow tab down here to pull up my lead lists and I'm going to grab sold to in the past. And so Amelia is going to be the only one who's going to come up here, which is totally fine. But I can also add change jobs in the last 90 days. So now I can save this search and Amelia has saved, uh, she has changed jobs in the last 90 days. I can now save this search and call it sold to in the past new job and so now I have a search of all of the people that I've sold to in the past that I will get a notification when they move and I can then get a reminder to, to sell to them all of these notifications go into your home screen where you'll be able to see all of these things so that's another way way underutilized piece of you know functionality within sales navigator that I don't see enough people taking advantage of creating a static list adding people to that list and then watching for triggers. Are they posting? Are they changing industry? Are they changing jobs? You know, what's going on? People you interact with. Remove people who viewed your profile. Remove contacted people so that you can only look at net new people. Phenomenal workflow straight within Sales Navigator. So uh, I just wanted to jump into activities and shared experiences because change jobs in the last 90 days and posted on LinkedIn are both two phenomenal filters that I see underutilized completely. Change jobs in the last 90 days is amazing because they are in a new company. They have to get all of their systems set up. They need to get everything set the way that they wanted. And then posted on LinkedIn in the last 30 days is awesome because it goes over the uh, people who are active on LinkedIn, only 2% of people on LinkedIn are actually posting. So if you want to reach people who are trying on LinkedIn, they're trying to build a brand, they're trying to build their present presence, that's an awesome filter for that one. Now, the next filter I want to go in that everybody sleeps on is the groups. LinkedIn groups is special in such a way because they have the worst community platform probably on the internet. But there are all of these groups that you can find. So we have real estate investors, right? This group is named real estate investors. And there are 180,000 people who are in this group. Now, like I mentioned, I'm not sure if you heard me. LinkedIn groups is the worst community platform on the entire internet. So what did these people have to do? They didn't find out about the group organically. They didn't get referred into the group because one of their friends wanted to bring them in. They went into the, the LinkedIn search bar and said, I want to connect with other real estate professionals, or I want to connect with other people who think like me. I'm going to use 
LinkedIn and see if I can find any groups. And then they got bamboozled into the worst community experience ever. But I digress. So what this tells us is this is some cheap, cheap intent data that you can get about people. So there, here's a real estate investor group. But what if I wanted to talk to people who are interested in automation, right? This is a group completely about automation that there's 120,000 people that you can still set up your job title filters, you can set up your industry filters, you can set up your geography filters to search through this group for your ideal customer audience. And you know that they are interested in automation because they joined this group, not because they found out about it accidentally and ran into it, not because their friend referred them in, but because they took the time and they searched out the automation group on their own. Next little tidbit, and this this one's a little spicy, uh, use this one with care, is this special Connections Of tab right here. Connections Of allows you to do something that I don't see anybody talking about, and I've used successfully in the past uh, with sales teams that I've worked with, and it works great. What you can do is you can connect with Sure, you can connect with your, your business partners, right? Connect with your business partners, search them for as, as the connections. I can connect here and I can say, Jordan Crawford, give me all of the connections that I share with Jordan Crawford on a first, second, and third degree level up to a thousand results. Because that's what it's going to give you. It's, it's not superpowers. That, that's what it's going to give you. So we sh Jordan Crawford and I share all of these. Awesome. Thanks, Jordan. There's some, probably some good people in here that he knows that I should know as well. But what you could really do is you could jump in and if you know that somebody is doing a lot of LinkedIn prospecting, you can start getting a glimpse into the kind of LinkedIn prospecting that they're doing and maybe even start trying to step into some deals that they are trying to step into. So this isn't exactly a competitor, but this is another one of my friends, uh, Jesse Ouellette, connections of Jesse Ouellette. And so what I could do is I know Jesse is prospecting on LinkedIn. I know he's going after people. New people are going to constantly be added to this list and I can start stepping into these conversations. If he's talking to Ed, I want to be talking to Ed. If he's talking to Tony, I want to be talking to Tony. And we can set this as a saved search. And as new people start being added, we can start stepping into those conversations because he's doing the prospect and he's already doing the work. He's connecting with them. So you could start doing a little bit of trampling on uh, your your competitors competitors outreaches, uh, if you can get connected with them and they have this setting turned on, don't tell them that I sent you though. This is this is a uh, a great one. Uh, let's see. So those are some nice uh, tricks that I found with the lead filters. We're going to go over a couple of the account filters, but before we go on. Just play around with these filters. They're incredibly powerful. They let you slice and dice the data really, really well. And I see a lot of people not using some for really good features, like years in current position, years in current company. Awesome to find new people, or on the opposite end of the spectrum, awesome to find people who have been there forever. Activities and shared experiences is a treasure trove of you know job changes and recently posting on LinkedIn, all of those things. So when we go to accounts, there's not, ooh, whoops, account filters. There's not as many amazing features in here uh, to note, but I will still point out some of my favorites. Knowing that they're hiring on LinkedIn, great. I, I do like knowing that somebody is growing, their company is trying to expand. That's, that's a very good trigger to have. Unfortunately, we don't have any knowledge of what types of jobs that they're trying to hire, uh, hire for straight from Sales Navigator. So. Uh, I wish we could do that, but we can't do it right here. Recent activities, this is great. Senior leadership changes in the last 30 months, funding events in the past 12 months. It's all right here. You don't need an extra subscription. You've got some great data here uh, as well. Company headcount is, is okay. Company headcount growth is even better. So I actually submitted three support tickets to figure this out because nobody would answer my question. Uh, company headcount growth, this percentage is based off of the last year. It is not based off the last three months. It's not based off of the past six months. It's based off the past year, and that's straight from LinkedIn support. So uh, if you want to use that, just know that it's from the past year. Uh, what I really, really love, though, is department headcounts and department headcount growths. What a great signal for you know knowing that a company is growing their sales team or something like that. I really, really like that one. Um, and then technologies used. 
I wonder where they're getting this data from, but it seems like it's a pretty wide database. I think there's some things in here that probably aren't mentioned. So if we go to W, I wonder if WooCommerce was mentioned. Let's see if you can find it. Oh, no, maybe it's not that expensive. But anyway, still, they have technologies. If you can find a, a big one on here that matches yours, I don't necessarily see Salesforce. Let's try that. Yeah, so we have Salesforce. So, oh, we have a lot of things for Salesforce. So, you know, a, a great technology filter over here as well. So I basically wanted to make this video because I see way too many people asking me questions and I just say to them, this could totally be made on Sales Navigator. You just haven't looked at the filters enough. Dive deep into these filters. Let me know if you have any questions. Uh, this is something that comes up all the time and you can do a lot of creative things with. Uh, and I think just more people should be taking advantage. So like I said, if you have any questions, reach out to me on LinkedIn. I'd be happy to help.